Hello everyone, welcome to Neetube. I am Arun Kumar and welcome to Bio 38 MCQ series. Here I'm going to cover 22 chapters of 11th standard as well as 16 chapters of 12th standard. A total of 38 chapters, hence the name Bio 38 MCQ series for your NEET as well as CET examination. I'm going to cover up all important questions from all 38 chapters. So I request you to subscribe to Neetube channel, share and like the videos. Okay, in this particular session, I'm going to deal with 30 very, very important MCQs of the chapter Molecular Basis of Inheritance. It is the second chapter in the unit Genetics that is in your 12th standard. So I request you to watch the video till end because I'm going to cover 30 very, very important questions. Very, very important for your need as well as for your CET examination. Okay, so we'll start with our uh, first question or uh, before that I have to tell you in NEET examination, if you see the previous year question paper, you can score 25 percentage of the marks from this unit genetics, particularly from molecular basis of inheritance, you can expect four to six MCQs. Okay, so this chapter is very important. Okay, so you have to be thorough with each and every concept of this chapter. You can score very good in it. Okay, so we'll start with our first question now. Which one of the following is a wrong statement regarding mutation? So we need to pick a wrong statement out of four statements regarding mutation. We know that what is mutation. So this is the DNA model, a double helix model, and we know that these are the nitrogenous bases. So because of certain mutagens, what are mutagens? they actually cause mutation mutation means change in the arrangement of the base pair so this is the base pair now let us assume that this is adenine and this is thymine okay so let us assume that in this dna a segment is called as gene which produces a protein this segment now produces a protein but unfortunately because of the mutation because of certain chemicals or physical or chemical or even biological mutagens this sequence is now deleted this one, this particular nitrogenous base is now deleted. So this is now called as mutation. This particular gene now cannot produce the protein. Even if it can produce the protein, the protein will be abnormal. This is it. Simple. So the mutation. Option A, ultraviolet radiation, UV and gamma rays are mutagens. Obviously, they are mutagens. They cause mutation. Okay. So B, change in a single base pair of DNA does not cause mutation. Actually, a single base pair change because of the mutagen causes mutation in the gene okay so which can produce abnormal protein or sometimes it cannot produce protein so that is mutation so option b is wrong statement correct so we have got the answer now option b is the correct answer for the question number one okay we anyhow like we see the uh, c option c deletion and insertion of base pairs cause frame shift mutation okay so let me just uh, take this model so this is a, a paper model of dna now you could see here these are the sequences correct okay let us just you know assume that according to our ncrt these sequences are named like agt ram has cap okay simply we write okay so like this ram has cap now let us assume that you know because of the mutation this is now deleted has is deleted that is CCG is deleted. That means the cap is going to shift to CCG portions that is RAM cap. So this is this shifting of the nitrogenous bases from one place to the other place because of the deletion in the nitrogenous base is called as frame shift mutation. Got it? Frame shift mutation. A very important one. There are plenty of types of uh, frame shift mutation this is one simple example okay so frame shift mutation also leads to mutation okay done so next one cancer cells commonly show chromosomal aberration okay if you just you know take one cell now this is the nucleus and uh, this is the chromosome and uh, because of the mutation okay let me just pull out one chromosome here the, here the mutation has occurred see the length this is normal chromosome uh, there must be a deletion of a certain uh, DNA segments as a result you could see that this chromosome portion is also deleted see now this chromosome is showing aberration this is now not normal chromosome it is abnormal chromosome correct so mutation also causes aberration in the chromosome normally seen in cancer cells got it so option B is the wrong statement and it is the correct answer for the question one now we'll uh, shift uh, to the question number two 
If one strand of uh, DNA has nitrogenous base sequence as ATCTG, what would be the complementary RNA strand sequence? Okay, so we simply draw a DNA here. So we have five nitrogenous base sequence. Okay, A, T, C, T, G. Let us assume that this is the template strand and this is the coding strand. Always remember coding strand will not code for any mRNA. So no mRNA will be coded but the name is given as coding strand. I don't know why. This is the template strand where it always codes for the mRNA. Simple, easy. Okay. So we have the sequence here. So during transcription process a new mRNA will be synthesized. We will have remember it is RNA. So A here we have complementary base correct so instead of t we should have u because it is rna t is absent there here we should have a here we should have g here we should have a here we have c u a g a c should be there in the mrna for a t c t g so we got the answer u a g a c is the answer option a is correct for this okay so we go further these are the possible questions okay so remember this we will go to the next question that is our third question there is a diagrammatic question given below is the diagrammatic representation of one of the categories of small molecular weight organic compounds in the living tissues identify the category shown and the one blank component x in it okay so the diagram is a, a pento sugar okay so we just draw a pento sugar okay pento sugar let us name the carbon atom one 2, 3, 4. In the pento sugar, you see 5 carbons, correct? So, here what we have? H2, CH2. So, fifth carbon is there. Okay. So, here to the first carbon, we have one X. So, we need to identify what is this X. So, this is the pento sugar and in the second carbon atom, we have OH group, hydroxyl group and here also hydroxyl group is there. But OH is present here. That means this ribose sugar that is a pento sugar is ribose. So this is a ribose sugar now. That means ribose sugar will be seen in RNA, not in DNA. If I just delete this, then it becomes deoxyribose sugar. Simple, right? This is seen in DNA. That means in the diagram, the pento sugar given is RNA's ribose sugar. Done. Simple. OH is there in the second group. No need to get confused here. Very simple. Okay. So we have OH group in the second carbon atom in the pento sugar. That means it is a ribose sugar. Okay, so X as it is RNA, so we can expect adenine, guanine, cytosine instead of thymine, I should write uracil as nitrogenous base. That means at X is nothing but nitrogenous base. When NB that is nitrogenous base, it could be adenine, guanine, cytosine, uracil binds to a pento sugar that is ribose in the case of RNA, then it makes a component which is called as nucleoside, correct? Simply I write nucleoside. So remember this question could be asked what type of linkage is present between a nitrogenous base and a pento sugar in DNA as well as RNA it's common. So that linkage is N glycosidic linkage see very very important okay the N glycosidic linkage between nitrogenous base and the pento sugar makes a component called as nucleoside nucleoside means two components okay so done so if you look into the option is it amino acid no it is not amino acid is it a nucleotide no it could be nucleotide if p was given but here the p is not given correct so p is completely absent in the fifth carbon atom so if p was there then obviously it should be nucleotide correct but it is not nucleotide now it is nucleoside okay so option b is also wrong now nucleoside yes it is nucleoside and X is given and it's very simply here we have OH that means it is RNA ribose sugar that means it is RNA so we can expect uracil so it is given in option C nucleoside uracil correct it cannot be cholesterol so option C is correct for this question done simple okay so we go to the next question let me erase it let me take uh, some time okay now Removal of introns and joining of exons, joining exons in a defined during transcription is called as. Okay, so let us just, you know, draw the mRNA. After transcription, we get mRNA and these are the sequences. Okay, so we have this. 
let us assume that this is the 5 prime end and this is the 3 prime end okay so now here this is nothing but uh, the sequences which actually codes for a particular protein but not all the sequences are active okay so there are certain uh, inactive sequences which is useless so we don't want them okay i need to remove that useless sequences from this mrna okay so let us assume that this portion of the mrna is expressed one and i call it as exons expressed sequences in the mrna is called as exon here okay and this one let us assume that we have exons because you know they are copied directly from the dna even the dna also got exons and introns same okay so here i'm not talking about dna it's not required let us assume that uh, we have between exons and introns this sequence that is a copy directly from the dna are non-expressed and they are called as introns so we have introns here okay so we have introns okay so remember one thing that uh, for example in a dna if we have four exons how many introns are present five so this could be asked if you get a question like you know uh, in a dna sequence uh, there are five exons then how many introns are there extra that is six plus one just add one okay so introns will be one extra so we need to remove that introns now because i don't want these introns so how can i remove this uh, by a simple procedure called as splicing so normally if you let's just look into the transcription process okay so this is the dna and uh, now the sequence is present on the template stand is copied and ultimately mrna is produced and this mrna in eukaryotes is called as hn mrna heterogeneous nuclear mrna okay this contains exons as well as introns i need to remove the introns so i need to process this mrna by a process called as post transcriptional modification correct so post transcriptional modification is seen only in eukaryotes modi modi modification okay seen only in eukaryotes that is in our body okay so that post transcriptional modification of this hr and hmrna is called as splicing very simple here to the 5 prime end i'm just adding methyl guanosine triphosphate please remember and this process of adding methyl triphosphate phosphate component is uh, called as capping okay capping methyl guanosine triphosphate phosphate is added to 5 prime end by a process called as capping here i'm going to add poly adenylate residues residues poly a tail so this is called as tailing tailing okay capping and tailing on the opposite ends uh, is actually you know very important now for the mechanism called as splicing so when we add this obviously the introns will be removed so non express sequences will be removed from the mrna so now this actually shift to this side and other side will shift to this side and ultimately we get a functional mrna and ultimately we get the functional mrna correct so this mrna is now ready for translation mechanism Now we'll go to the next question that is question number five we got the answer for question number four that is splicing splicing involves two important procedures that is capping and tailing remember that very important here we are removing only introns and only we are retaining exons okay so that becomes functional mrna okay that is seen only in eukaryotes okay so next question the diagram shows an important concept in the genetic implication of dna fill in the blanks a to c dna to mrna mrna to protein and who proposed this very simple actually so if you just you know recall this concept central dogma who proposed this francis crick actually proposed central dogma according to him actually it is uh, universal we know that so the dna one strand of the dna will be copied to produce the rna that is mrna itself okay so this mrna uh, when it enc encounters the ribosome so this is the ribosome okay so ribosome and it produces the proteins okay so dna to mrna mrna to the proteins the message is transferred in this manner and this is called as central dogma and the process of production of mrna from dna is called as transcription 
process of production of protein from mrna is called as translation correct so this is central dogma so we got what is a transcription what is b translation okay then who proposed this francis crick so what is the answer for this question now b transcription translation c is francis crick option b is correct for this question okay we proceed further next question which one of the following is wrongly matched okay operon structural genes operator promoter transcription writing information from dna to trna translation using information in mrna to make protein repressor protein binds to operator to stop enzyme synthesis okay so we will see what is operon in prokaryotes the genes actually you know we call the gene as cystron okay so in prokaryotes the cystron is polycystonic what is the meaning of polycystonic that means a gene can produce more than two products that is proteins that is polycystonic poly means many but in the case of eukaryotes the cystron is monocystonic in the case of eukaryotes that means one gene can produce only one protein remember this okay so i'm talking about prokaryotes that is seen uh, that is operon is seen so let me just uh, uh, write this is the dna segment of the prokaryote okay now let me magnify this okay so like this here operon very simple very easy to understand this operon concept so to understand that you would need to mug up this how do you read piposia that's it how many letters are there total seven are there piposia is the code to remember operon what is operon operon is actually nothing but a regulator <clears throat> gene present along with structural gene in the prokaryotes a regulator gene is nothing but i gene so we have a gene here called as regulator gene so regulator means controlling gene and here p o z y a so p o z y a is nothing but the segment of the gene called as structural genes so in operon you see three structural genes z y a so please remember how many structural genes are present in operon total three okay so this regulatory gene now produces the mrna and the mrna is called as repressor mrna this repressor mrna undergoes translation to produce the protein and the protein name is called as repressor protein let me draw it so it looks like this easy okay so now we have this operator repressor proteins always have the tendency to go and bind to the operator okay so it goes and binds to the operator as a result it blocks the way for rna polymerase so there is one enzyme called as rna polymerase which always have the tendency to read zya gene segment to produce the proteins so z can produce uh, an enzyme which is called as beta galactosidase so beta galactosidase okay so what is the function of this beta galactosidase let me tell you this also so that you can understand the entire concept very well so beta galactosidase always convert lactose into glucose plus galactose got it the y gene okay so y gene actually always actually you know permits the lactose into the cell you may get a question like name the enzyme in the prokaryote which actually allows the lactose to enter into the cell okay lact that is nothing but permease enzyme which is produced from the gene called as y whereas a gene actually have the ability to produce another enzyme called as trans acetylase okay trans acetylase enzyme and uh, the function of this trans acetylase is bit complex so i am not going to talk about it now okay it requires a lengthy session okay fine so now this uh, repressor protein goes and binds to this as a result it blocks the path of rna polymerase the rna polymerase cannot read zya done so now operon is switched off correct simple okay so this is operon now in operon what are the things you see promoter of regulatory gene i is always regulatory gene whereas promoter of structural gene operator of structural gene and zya are nothing but three structural genes in operon done simple easy so here operon structural genes are there yes operator yes promoter yes so option a is actually you know correct so it is not a wrong statement okay so it is not the answer let us see the next one transcription writing information from dna to trna we know that dna 
produces that is after transcription it uh, produces the mrna not erna so option b is wrongly matched so we got the answer option b okay let us see anyhow the next option translation using information in mrna to make protein yes as i said earlier this mrna will be used to produce the proteins correct so that is in the ribosome so option c is also correctly matched d repressor protein binds to operator to stop enzyme synthesis that's what i said okay so this is actually also correct so option b is wrongly matched so we got the answer option b is correct for this question so let me just continue further so we have an inducer the inducer is no normally allolactose okay in lac operon concept inducer is allolactose or lactose which always binds to this repressor protein when it binds to the repressor protein the shape of the repressor protein changes it becomes like this and it cannot actually bind to the operator now operator is free that's it operator is free so rna polymerase can easily read zya now this condition is called as lac operon is switched on simple easy okay so we got the answer for this question let us move further to the next question transformation was discovered by so transformation we know that in uh, the molecular basis of chapter uh, this is the first experiment okay so given in your ncrt textbook griffith griffith actually conducted one experiment in streptococcus pneumoniae this bacteria actually causes pneumonia in mammals in streptococcus pneumoniae there are two types one is smooth streptococcus pneumoniae other one is rough okay based on the polysaccharide coat on its cell wall okay smooth polysaccharide coat is there polysaccharide is there here rough no polysaccharide coat whereas the smooth one is virulent what is the meaning of virulent dangerous this is non virulent that is not dangerous even if uh, uh, rough streptococcus pneumonia colonies are injected into the animals obviously animal will not develop pneumonia but this one obviously will develop pneumonia because there is polysaccharide coat around its cell wall okay so that is actually the thing so griffith simply actually injected okay so streptococcus pneumonia which is smooth strain into the mice and mice died because of pneumonia second he injected rough strain rs to the mice but mice survived okay did not get pneumonia next actually he heat killed that is he just you know heated the streptococcus pneumonia colonies and killed it and then injected to the mice the mice survived okay next he mixed heat killed streptococcus pneumonia smooth colonies with the rough colonies rough strains okay of the streptococcus pneumonia and what we expect anyhow it's not going to cause pneumonia because it is already killed this one is not going to cause because it is non virulent injected into the mice but mice died why the reason is transformation the genetic material which is present in the streptococcus pneumonia somehow got transferred into the r strains genetic material that's it it got combined with the dna of s strains got it okay so ultimately the r strain becomes oh, so actually yeah it becomes the s strain that is transformation that's it r strain somehow became s strain because of taking the dna from heat killed s strains that's it so this mechanism is called as transformation got it taking up dna from outside by a bacteria is called as transformation done simple so griffith actually discovered transformation done we got the answer well, let us see uh, the next uh, thing meselson and stahl uh, hershey and chase uh, watson and crick okay watson and crick we all know that they proposed double helix model of dna yes right okay so whereas if you talk about hershey chase hershey and chase you know they conducted experiment uh, on the e coli with the help of the bacteriophages so this is the bacteriophage okay so they actually you know you uh, grew two different colonies of bacteriophage what is bacteriophage it's a virus which infects the bacteria okay so this is the e coli e coli okay so then they allowed this bacteriophage to phage to infect this e coli before actually you know allowing uh, these bacteriophages to infect this e coli they treated the two different types of bacteriophages with the two different types of radio labeled isotopes that's it one is with the phosphorus 
okay that is phosphate group that is p32 radio labeled group this one with that is another one with sulfur that is sulfur 35 no confusion here p32 yes 35 treated differently to the different types of bacteriophage then actually they allowed to infect the e coli okay after some time they recovered the dna which was radio, radio labeled with p32 that means it is they came to the conclusion that it is the dna which actually got transformed from the bacteriophage into the e coli so this is it done so that means which actually the agent causes transformation it's nothing but dna in this case s35 is normally not found in dna so it cannot incorporate into the dna of the virus correct so it has to incorporate only to the protein coat that is called as capsid so this is capsid done so anyhow like you know the bacteriophage the body cannot enter into the e coli only the dna should enter correct so they did not recover s35 dna because s35 dna always incorporates within the protein coat the capsid capsid remains outside because in the virus this uh, during the infection the capsid will not enter only dna enters but in this case because as they use p32 p32 means phosphate is also present in dna so it has got the ability to incorporate to the dna so that's what actually they found the viral dna inside the e coli done so this is actually they proved and even given the proof that transformation takes place done okay Whereas if you talk about uh, the next fellow that is uh, Messelson and another scientist, Stoll, they actually you know try to prove the DNA replicates semi-conservatively. DNA replication that is semi-conservative mode of DNA replication. Okay, in this case you know they used N14 that is a light isotope of nitrogen and N15. Okay, so here they used E. coli so somehow they try to incorporate this N14 and N15 into the DNA of the E. coli fine so I will not talk about it even though the experiment so the here to separate this they used uh, I'll just write uh, cesium chloride cesium chloride so the solution which is used by Messelson and Stahl in their uh, semi-conservative mode of DNA replication experiment is cesium chloride and this mechanism is actually called as density gradient mechanism or procedure please remember all these things density gradient cesium chloride very very important got it so this is all about Messelson and Stahl they actually try to prove the semi-conservative mode of DNA replication in bacteria E. coli but there is one more scientist called as Taylor he tried to prove semi-conservative mode of DNA replication in plants which type of plant the specific name is given in your textbook Visia faba okay we'll follow binomial nomenclature rule Visia faba remember this okay done so we are done with uh, question number seven so you are now have no confusion okay so we'll go to the next uh, important question balbiani rings are the sites of what is this balbiani rings okay question number eight so let me just tell you there are two types of chromosomes okay so in chromosome you see two types of uh, uh, chromosomes okay so one type is found in the salivary glands salivary glands and other type is found in the oocyte that is ovum okay oocytes of amphibian okay i'll write amphibian oocyte salivary glands of certain insects you can also imagine drosophila melanogaster okay so drosophila we write like this and let me just you know uh, draw the type of chromosome which is found in the salivary glands of the drosophila or insects which looks like this this is now one chromosome one chromosome this is the second chromosome this is the third four five see so this is actually the chromosome which is held together by a common point at the center and this is called as chromocenter these different five chromosomes are held together by chromocenter which is situated at the center okay if you look into each chromosome at regular intervals they have certain puff like structure bulged structure swollen structures like this okay Swollen, swollen, swollen structures and these swollen structures are called as Balbiani rings. Balbiani rings. Why the name given to this uh, swollen structure as Balbiani rings? Very simple because the chromosome that is in the salivary glands was discovered by a scientist called as E.G. Balbiani. E.G. Balbiani. He discovered it and he gave a name to this chromosome as polytene chromosome. Simple. 
So this is now polytene chromosome. In the polytene chromosome, what you see? Balbiani rings. Done. And where exactly at what stage of mitosis you see polytene chromosome? You see them during mitosis prophis. Please note all the points. Okay, mitosis prophis, you see polytene chromosome discovered by E.G. Balbiani and puffs are there called as Balbiani rings and these Balbiani rings play an important role in the production of RNA and protein. Very, very important. They produce RNA and protein. Done. So that's all about polytene chromosome. Okay, so we got the answer actually already. But anyhow, let me talk about the second type of uh, the chromosome that is found in the oocytes of amphibians called as lamp brush chromosome so this is the second type first type is polytene chromosome second type is lamp brush chromosome normally if you look into the structure of the lamp brush chromosome it looks like this looks like a brush comb like structure like this okay so this is actually lamp brush chromosome now where exactly at what stage of cell division you see this lamp brush chromosome in the oocytes of the amphibian this question could be asked normally you see in the diplotene stage okay so little zara please don't dance so d this is actually the stages five stages of meiosis one prophase one correct in the prophase one we have five stages liptotene zygotene packetine this one is diplotene diakinesis in the diplotene stage you see Lamprish chromosome done okay so we got the answer anyhow rna and protein synthesis that is nothing but balbiani rings okay where exactly lipid synthesis okay let me give more information okay i always believe giving in informative videos okay so we go further to the option b where exactly lipid synthesis takes place in our cell endoplasmic reticulum is the site of lipid synthesis remember it could be asked next one nucleotide synthesis nucleotide synthesis takes place in the cells of liver so nucleotides are seen in dna and rna so liver is the site nucleotides are synthesized in our body then next one polysaccharides where exactly the polysaccharides are synthesized the polysaccharides are synthesized in the cell membrane of all living organisms where cell membrane if you look into the plant cell so plant cell mainly made up of a polysaccharide called as cellulose correct so cellulose is nothing but produced from the cell membrane of the plant cell so cell membrane okay so got the information answer for this question is option a done next one satellite dna is important because it codes for enzymes needed for dna replication codes for proteins needed in cell cycle show high degree of polymorphism in population and also same degree of polymorphism in an individual which is heritable from parents to children does not code for proteins and is same in all members of the population okay before we choose the answer i have to tell you what is satellite dna what is this satellite dna i think you people have heard about uh, this uh, thing vntr what is vntr variable number tandem repeats play an important role in dna finger printing yes right okay so we need to identify what is this vntr so satellite dna can be classified into three types okay but uh, you are uh, too young to understand all this stuff okay let me just uh, uh, see uh, explain this uh, superficially the first one is actually called as the micro satellite dna and the next one is mini satellite dna next one is macro satellite dna okay so now look at this this is the dna right you know normally human dna in one cell uh, could measure up to six feet okay so it's uh, two meters okay very very lengthy so if you just you know these are the nitrogenous base pairs correct nitrogenous base pairs and normally if you just you know keep on reading this somewhere else you will see the repeats for example see tt is there we need to identify tt is here tt is repeated again tt is repeated again correct how many times the, the tt is repeated thrice correct so that is actually micro satellite done simple so these are the repeated sequences how many times it is repeated in this particular dna three times three times okay so that is tt is repeated thrice so and how many bases are there in this tt two are there that is if any repeats which is between 
two to six, then it is considered as micro satellites. These are the small nitrogenous bases stretches which is seen throughout the DNA at regular intervals. That's it. it. You can see the repeats of it many times. Okay. For example, like let me just write in my DNA, I have AGCT sequence which is repeated 50 times. Okay. AGCT is repeated 50 times in my DNA. But if I see your so, DNA, AGCT is repeated 40 times. See, correct variable number tandem repeats for me it is 50 times but for you it is 40 times it varies from individual to individual okay so this is micro satellite mini satellite is same here the mini satellite normally like the base pairs will be more than 20 so it's like a long one a a t t g a a c uh, sorry t c t a like that okay this particular sequence will be repeated many times it could be like 100 times within one dna so this is mini satellite got it micro mini next one is a macro satellite macro means more than 100 base pair stretches look i cannot write the 100 base pair stretches okay so that is macro so this is what actually the thing so these mini micro or macro satellite play very very important role in identification of the individual okay for example see here this is the dna present in the father and this is the dna present in the mother so let us assume that uh, the father has gc sequence that is a uh, two nitrogenous bases uh, that is uh, the micro satellite repeated 10 times in his dna and even mother also has gc which is repeated nine times okay so uh, maybe okay eight times let us like consider it as eight times and you are the product of these two okay so you should have the combination of father and mother's dna correct okay so 50 50 so in your dna you must have gc so the same should because it is inheritable correct okay given by your parents and how many gcs you may have you may have around nine exactly between 10 and 8 correct so this is actually very very vital in dna fingerprinting for example like you know if we match in the dna fingerprinting this is my dna so here i may have gc which is repeated 13 times so it's not matching it is not even close to father and mother's dna gcs correct so officially you are the son done so this is actually the thing got it okay next we go to okay we see uh, the options codes for enzymes needed for dna replication actually satellite dnas are waste stretches actually it is not waste but they are actually kind of heterochromatin what is heterochromatin in our dna there are two types of chromatin one is euchromatin they are transcriptionally active heterochromatin they are not transcriptionally active no transcription correct so they are not going to produce any proteins done so they cannot produce any enzymes or proteins because all enzymes are nothing but proteins okay so option a is wrong b codes for proteins needed in cell cycle they cannot code for any protein satellite dna got it okay they play an important role in providing structure see the chromosome looks like this why because of these satellite dnas because you know they are going to fill the gaps between the genes so as a result you know you see a good structure of a chromosome which looks like this correct so structural stability to the chromosome or dna okay shows high degree of polymorphism in population yes that's what i said so gc is in your father's case it is 8 or mother's case it is 10 something like that or in your case it is 9 see again actually between the individuals there is high degree of polymorphism okay so this is seen will be seen if you see or compare these uh, gc sequences with another individual okay so maybe present in another country he may be having 25 28 so high degree of polymorphism got it and also same degree of polymorphism in an individual yes in you you have around nine so same got it okay so which is heritable from parents to children that's what i said it is heritable okay so we got the answer for this c is correct next let us see option d also does not code for proteins and is same in all members of the population no actually it does not code for protein correct but is same in all members of the population no it varies that's what actually it's named as variable number tandem repeats it varies from population to population or individual to individual done so this is all about satellite dna please remember this no confusion okay fine 
Uh, next uh, question, we'll go to the question number 10. Statement, right? DNA fingerprinting is the basis of paternity testing uh, in case of disputes. Yes, DNA fingerprinting is for solving paternity dispute or identification of the dead bodies, all this stuff. Okay, even in animals also. Okay, even a tiger population, they use DNA fingerprinting. Next, DNA polymorphism is inheritable from children to parents. We know that parent to children is possible. This is not possible. Children to parent is not possible. Okay, so statement one is correct but statement two is wrong so we have to go with option c yes one turn of z dna has okay this is very very important okay let me stress this so there are four types of dna okay let me write dna there are four types one is a dna b dna c dna d dna no z dna there is no d dna okay if you look into the dna structure normally st dna will be helically coiled like this okay so from here to here in the DNA, this is nothing but one turn, correct? We know that this is the one turn of the DNA, correct? Okay. Now in the one turn of our DNA, normally in your NCRT textbook, you might have studied that one turn consists of how many base pairs? 10 base pairs. If the DNA in one turn contains 10 base pairs, then obviously it is B DNA. So one turn containing 10 base pairs, nitrogenous bases, then it is B DNA. If you talk about a DNA, it got one extra base pair. That is, instead of 10, it has got 11 base pairs. Note this point. Yes, a DNA contains how many base pairs in one turn? 11 base pairs. C DNA. C DNA is actually called as complementary DNA, which is synthesized from the mRNA. So during transcription, you get mRNA, correct? So you need to isolate this mRNA, take it to lab, and then in the lab, you need to construct artificial DNA from this. So this is mRNA complementary i need to actually build one complementary strand to this that's it it makes dna so this dna is called as complementary dna artificial dna and if you look into the structure they are also helically coiled and in one turn they normally consist of nine base pairs got it one turn consists of nine base pairs whereas z dna is considered as the largest dna among all these four types z dna consists of 12 base pairs in one turn Take the screenshot. Okay, I'll write it down. Very simple. Okay, ZDNA contains 12 base pairs in one turn. So we got the answer for this. One turn of ZDNA has how many base pairs? 10, 12, 9, 11. You got the answer. It's 12. Yeah. Uh, next uh, question. In the process of replication, one strand of DNA is conserved and another newly synthesized. Okay, let me just talk about uh, the replication procedure. Very simple to understand. Okay. Okay, so what we have here, helically coiled a DNA. Okay, so these two strands are present, correct? And let us name it as P strand, P strand. What is PP? Parental strand, original strand, parental strand. And this side, let me name it as five prime end and this side as three prime end. Always remember when you start, start with five prime. This side should be three prime, very simple. Larger number to smaller number. Let us see this one will be 3 prime and this one will be 5 prime done easy okay it's opposite now during replication we all know that replication is always semi-conservative mode of dna replication correct semi-conservative what is the meaning of semi semi means half 50 percentage what is conservation you are conserving it you are saving it for the next generation that's it okay so 50 percentage of the dna will be saved or conserved for the next generation that is semi-conservative okay so what we have here is now during replication let me just erase this portion okay so it will be easy now let me just stretch this so it will be easy for us to understand so what we have here is okay so let me just you know label it as 5 prime because ncrt actually it should be 3 prime okay or to avoid your confusion <laughs> yeah this is easy now okay so sorry yeah this is five prime and this is three prime okay so done so now let me just tell uh, during replication process during initiation of replication we need some enzymes two particular enzymes one is called as helicase we need helicase enzyme this helicase enzyme will come and break the hydrogen bonds present between the nitrogenous bases it's going to break it when hydrogen bonds are broken, obviously like, you know, two strands got separated. And let me just write how it looks. Correct. So 
when DNA strands are separated because of helicase action, the DNA strands, individual strands, tends to supercoil around itself. What is supercoiling? Because of, uh, see, DNA is normally like this, correct? If I just you know, break this, obviously, they have the tendency to supercoil. You can imagine, you now take two wires, electric wires and roll it, okay? And then try to separate it and leave it. So it start to coil, supercoil around itself. So that is actually the thing. To avoid supercoiling, we need one more enzyme called a topoisomerase. Topoisomerase. Isomerase. Okay, there are uh, three types. Topoisomerase 1, 2, 3. Okay, fine. So normally topoisomerase 2 play an important role and it tries to stabilize this. That means to it avoids the supercoiling of the DNA like this. So supercoiling will not be seen. First helicase comes, next comes to so topoisomerase 2 comes okay to avoid supercoiling of the separated DNA strands. Then comes one more protein which is called as SSBP. What is SSBP? Single strand binding proteins. They are very important. They also provide stability to the separated DNA strands. Done. Now actually you know the RNA primase which starts synthesizing the primers. What are primers? Primers are individual nucleotides. Okay. So normally contains adenine, guanine, cytosine, uracil. That will be there. Okay. Thymine will not be synthesized because the RNA primase enzyme produces primers. Done. Okay, that is RNA primers itself. Okay, it cannot produce DNA primers. So it starts adding. So in this direction, the direction is 5 prime to 3 prime. That is what I we always tell. The replication is always initiated in the direction 5 prime to 3 prime. Note this point. Replication in any of the organism will be in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. That is from here to here. So this is 5 prime, right? But when you write, you write 3 to 5. So this is actually the thing, but the direction is towards 5 prime to 3 prime. Correct. Okay. So this is replication. One strand is synthesized. Whereas here, the other strand is a bit different compared to this strand. Okay. So which is also in 5 prime to, sorry. Yeah. 5 prime to 3 prime direction because you know we need to consider 5 prime. This is 5 prime, 3 prime. Okay. In this direction. And here the synthesis of this uh, strand is discontinuous. Yes or no? Yes, discontinuous. Okay, it is not joined. For this, we need one enzyme which is called as ligase. So, ligase is going to join these discontinuous strands, and discontinuous strands are called as lagging strand. It is also called as Wokazaki fragments. Okay, so Wokazaki fragments done. Okay, so this is the basic of uh, the replication uh, because I explained everything because you need it for further. Okay, it's going to help you a lot. Okay, so in the process of replication, one strand of DNA is conserved and other strand is another is uh, another newly synthesized. Okay, so now after this replication, so we have this. So let me just you know change the color. This is newly synthesized strand. This is also newly synthesized strand, and the blue color one is parental strand. So if I take the newly synthesized DNA, okay, so this is parental strand, parental strand, and the green color one is nothing but newly synthesized or daughter strands and here let me just write this is daughter strand or newly synthesized strand so in the newly synthesized dna you see one parental strand that is 50 percentage and another 50 percentage is newly synthesized dna strands so semi-conservative correct so you see that one strand of dna is conserved yes we have conserved this parental strand and another newly synthesized done we got the answer so this is actually the thing of uh, semi-conservative mode of DNA replication. Okay. Option A is correct. Wakazaki fragments of the lagging strand is joined together by the enzyme. Uh, no need to talk about it. You know the answer that is DNA ligase. Even I told you the function of primase, they actually synthesizes RNA primers. Okay. During replication process. Topoisomerase, you know the function. They help to stabilize the separated DNA strands. That is, they pro they avoid supercoiling of the DNA strands. Polymerase, yes, we know that. Okay. Common. Next one. So, we got the answer for 13th one. That is B. 14th. Evidence of replication on Vicia Faba root tip was given by. Very simple. Taylor's experiment. So, Vicia Faba Taylor. Remember that. So, he proved that in plants, DNA also replicates in semi-conservative mode. Please note this. Okay. So that's actually the thing. Very simple. Let us not waste our time. Okay. So 14th one, option B. Next one, 15th one. 
sequence of enzyme acting in replication now we got it the first is always helicase then comes topoisomerase then comes dna polymerase then comes ligase correct so option a is correct for this so you should uh, think because helicase comes first if you have any confusion in the alphabet h is first then comes t simple easy so h second is t no confusion here next one part of a gene which codes for an enzyme is cystone exon intron codon so we i have already told you cystone so first thing is like if you just you know talk about the dna of uh, eukaryotes normally we have express sequences this is expressed this is non expressed expressed non expressed expressed non expressed expressed like that it goes like that okay so cystone is nothing but this exons actually they play an important role in the production of a protein correct so we need to remove these introns and that is called as splicing so here we have exons introns exons introns hence eukaryotic genes also called as split genes note this point split genes why split genes there are two types of segments in the dna or cystron that is split gene so we got the answer part of a gene which codes for an enzyme is cystron okay next up we go to question number 17 enzyme helping in combining amino acid to its particular trna in translation is okay so translation procedure in the what is the first step of translation it is nothing but amino acylation of trna okay so what we have here is we have trna okay okay let me just uh, draw that okay so what is this anti codon fine so this trna uh, what we need to do is like we need to bind a specific amino acid because trnas are the one which actually carries amino acid trnas are also called as adapter molecule okay so adapter molecule so this amino acid which is actually first before it is attached to the trna we need to charge it so we need to charge the amino acid by supplying atp so atp plus amino acid ultimately once amino acid is charged then it is fixed to attached to the trna and this entire process is called as amino acylation of trna this is very very important got it okay so if you just look into the options is it trna yes no amino acyl trna synthetase okay so here this process is brought about by amino acyl trna synthetase okay so charging of trna is done by amino acyl trna synthetase so we got the answer okay if you look into the option d what is this peptidyl transferase see peptidyl transferase is of the enzyme which for example let me just you know draw let us assume that this is the smaller sub unit of the ribosome okay let me just draw one more this is the larger sub unit of ribosome okay next what i have to do is here what we have is the mrna always remember mrna comes into contact with smaller ribosomal sub unit not with the larger ribosomal sub unit so we have five prime and here we have three prime and what is this these are nothing but codons what are codons codons are you know it's nothing but the three nitrogenous base got it so these three nitrogenous base are called as codons okay so we have here and let me just you know put some compartments in the larger subunit okay so like this this is one compartment and this is the second compartment and this is the third compartment it has got names very simple e the first one e means exit p means peptidyl that is transferring uh, uh, like a uh, peptide bond formation is taking place between the two amino acid that is p peptidyl transferase enzyme is there and this one is a a means arrival of trna always remember a site actually here you see millions of trna waiting so we have trna in the a site of the larger subunit okay each trna carries a specific amino acid got it so this is the thing in the p site what we have is that enzyme peptidyl transferase is there so what we have peptidyl transferase enzyme is waiting the function of the peptidyl transferase is to 
join two different amino acid during translation mechanism this what is this bond is called called as between two amino acid peptide bond the peptide bond formation is done by peptidyl transferase enzyme which is in the p site e site means exit of the trna once the trna binds to the codon okay that means the amino acid will remain in the p site okay whereas the trna loses the amino acid and it when it enters into the e site it will be removed out that is exit of the trna there is no M, uh, amino acid in the trna amino acid will remain here itself okay earlier it was carrying the amino acid comes and uh, binds to the specific codon once it binds the amino acid will dissociate that means detaches from the trna and the trna which is empty now will be removed through the exit site in the larger subunit okay so we got the answer now okay so for the 17th question answer is option b we'll go to the 18th question synthesis code on mrna is translated coding is done by dna strands code is transferred on trna dna coding takes place in anti parallel fashion very simple this is the mrna 5 prime 3 prime and these are the codons set of three nitrogenous base makes codon so this will be translated to produce proteins so mrna gets translated so we got the answer actually code on mrna is translated option a is correct next synthesis of polypeptide terminates when a nonsense codon of mrna reaches okay so again i need to draw the same diagram if i knew i would have written this diagram okay so this is 5 prime to 3 prime and you know what is this mrna and this one is small ribosome this is larger ribosomal subunit simple okay so what we have here is e site here what we have p site here what we have a site okay so the the mrna never moves it will be remained as it is but the ribosome both the subunit starts moving in this direction that is 5 prime to 3 prime remember translation is also initiated in which direction 5 prime to 3 prime transcription also initiated in the same direction so no confusion you got the answers actually okay if the question is asked because it's commonly asked question always remember bigger number to smaller number easy okay so here in the mrna there are two special things one is the first codon what is the first codon on mrna aug so this aug will be recognized by uac of trna what is uac anticodon so we know that so uac is going to recognize aug of the mrna that is codon and it will bind that means the first amino acid is now translated done okay so now once it is bound in the p site so when it reaches the e site the trna empty trna that will be removed because exit site so it moves keep on moving like that when it reaches the end that is where we have stop codons can you please uh, remember uh, the stop codons it is also called as non sense codons see we don't have anti codons for non sense codons hence the name stop codons okay we don't have any trna which is having the anti codons for uaa uag or uga oh, oh sorry yeah got, got it these three are the stop codons or non sense codons we don't have any trna to code for this done so as a result in the mrna somewhere else we have this any one out of three okay here i have oh sorry i have should have written uag okay let us assume that uag is there okay so this uag is stop codon so we don't have any trna so when it reaches the a site the trna will be here they try to recognize this and as a result this uh, trna cannot bind to this done so that means translation will be terminated because there are no trna to recognize these three nonsense codons on the mrna so this is the termination so termination of the translation always takes place in a site okay a site p site b site none it is in the a site what is happening in the p site the linking of amino acid is taking place because of peptidyl transferase enzyme where exactly exit of trna takes place in the e site done okay so you got the answer now option a is correct okay 21 enzyme for peptide formation is located in smaller subunit larger subunit 
central part of tRNA. I think you can easily answer this question now. It is in the larger subunit of the ribosome. Okay, which what is the name of the enzyme? Peptidyl transferase. Okay, what is the function of peptidyl transferase? It's going to link two different amino acid by peptide bond to form polypeptide chain. Done. Okay, so option B is correct. Next question. Enzyme transacetylase produced by the structural gene in E. coli. Okay, so you know about the operant concept. Split lactose into glucose and galactose is required in entry of lactose is coded by gene A. Okay. What is the code? Yeah, you know that. Peposia. Okay, so this is regulatory gene part. This is structural gene part. Okay, so Z always codes for beta galactosidase a y actually codes for permease a a actually codes for trans acetylase so here if you go to the option c it is coded by gene a it is proper for this question so we have to go with option c because structural gene a codes for trans acetylase enzyme in operon in e coli done yes next question in lac operon, gene synthesizing a repressor protein is called. Again, it's uh, you are a bit familiar with operon now. It's very simple. What is the name of the gene which produces a repressor protein? So that is nothing but I gene. What is I gene? I gene is called as regulatory gene. Okay, so we know that operator gene, structural gene, promoter gene, regulator gene. So regulator gene is the answer. Option D is correct for this question. We'll go to the next one. Lactose operon produces enzymes and again it's very simple ZYA is the sequence of enzyme that is structural genes actually not sequence of enzyme it is sequence of genes in the structural genes of the operon DNA segment and Z actually produces beta this one is actually produces P permease this one trans acetylase so we can easily identify beta galactosidase permease glycogen synthetase no galactosidase permease trans acetylase yes option b is correct for this question so we can easily pick next one this is also very very important having a knowledge of uh, this is very very helpful in the examination total number of base pairs present in the dna of e coli will be okay so what is the total number very simple it is given in your ncrt that is nothing but yeah in E. coli, the DNA length is 4 into 4.6 into 10 to the power 6 base pair. Okay, so we got the answer. Option B is correct. What about uh, this? Please note this point. This is actually the length of the DNA of present in 23 chromosomes. That is nothing but haploid. So you may get a question. What is the number of base pairs present in haploid chromosomes in humans? 3 into 3.3 .3 into 10 to the power 9 base pairs. What about diploid? If instead of this, if they ask question like the diploid, very simple, double it. 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power 6 base pairs. This is in diploid condition. Done. That is, I'm taking 46 chromosomes DNA. In this case, only 23 chromosomes DNA. The length is half. Done. Okay. So, remember all this stuff. 25th one. Name the linkage between a nitrogenous a nitrogen base and the pento sugar in a nucleotide. It's very simple. N glycosidic linkage. Yes, between a nitrogenous base and a pento sugar. This is the question. Okay, so sorry. I need to drag this here. So this is one nitrogenous base and this linkage is N glycosidic linkage. Done. Done. So to make nucleoside. Okay. Phosphodiester linkage will be seen here. This is the fifth carbon atom and you see the phosphoric acid group. So this is phosphodiester linkage or ester linkage. Okay, so between a phosphate group and a nucleoside. Okay, peptide linkage is between two different amino acids. So this is peptide. Okay, so we got the answer. Answer for this question is option A. Next question. In a polynucleotide chain, at one end, there is five prime end, which refers to what is the meaning of uh, this? Okay, so the presence of a free phosphate moiety at 5 prime end of ribosugar, the presence of free OH group at 5 prime end of ribosugar, both conditions are possible, none of this. Very simple. Why we name the DNA as 5 prime to 3 prime? So what is this 5 prime means? 
very simple if you just you know draw the pento sugar we all know that this is the fifth carbon atom no need to explain about it correct so what is linked here phosphate that's the reason why it is five prime end so answer is the presence of a free phosphate moiety at five prime end of the ribose sugar yes right simple so we got the answer option a is correct next question number 27 the technique used for isolation of genes is that is in rna d r dna technology recombinant dna technology what is the technique used northern blotting southern blotting eastern blotting okay what is this northern blotting northern blotting is uh, used to isolate the rna molecules okay so this is actually separation of rna molecules that is northern blotting southern blotting is separation of the dna molecules done so we got the answer actually so dna is southern blotting isolation of dna and separation of dna everything is uh, related to southern blotting northern blotting is related to rna okay so what about eastern blotting eastern blotting is related to separation and isolation of proteins very important anything could be asked but in this case they have asked about the genes genes means dna correct because genes are present within the dna segment so that is southern blotting dna fingerprinting also follows southern blotting note this point got it so option b is correct for this question next one uh, yeah there is nothing actually in this uh, question in dna 10 percentage is guanine okay it is present how much thymine is present very simple very easy we all know that dna mainly contains purines and pyrimidines correct so if you look into the purines adenine and guanine is nothing but the purine whereas pyrimidine is cytosine and thymine are the pyrimidines yeah, like uracil is also pyrimidine but uh, let me just uh, not write that okay so adenine guanine so in this case 10 percentage guanine is present so they have given 10 percentage so we don't know what is adenine we all know that if you look into char graph rule what is char graph rule number of purine is always equal to number of pyrimidines that is it is constant for a living organism so this is actually the formula of char graph okay so adenine guanine purine cytosine thymine pyrimidine so that is nothing but equal to one that is always constant so guanine is 10 percentage then obviously it always binds to the c correct okay cytosine so the c should be 10 percentage so percentage 100 already in that 20 percentage is g and c correct because 10 plus 10 is 20 then remaining is a and t now can you identify so that means 100 minus 20 that is 80 so we have 2 here that is adenine and thymine that means divided it by 2 so what is the answer you get 40 correct so adenine is 40 this is already 10 cytosine is also 10 this thymine is also 40 so now makes it 100 done so how much thymine is present now 40 percentage simple easy yes so this is very simple you know just apply the general knowledge there is nothing actually very simple okay because we know one value just apply the formula a plus g then c plus t done okay so you can get it Chalo then. next question uh, in mrna uh, if mrna consists of 100 uh, codons and it's a uh, 21st base undergoes a deletion then how many amino acids remain unchanged in the formed polypeptide this is also very easy it's not tricky actually just use your common sense there is nothing okay the question is mrna which is now containing 100 codons so 100 codons means uh, very simple 3 so 300 base pairs are there correct so we don't want to talk about this base pairs now let us just keep it 100 codon that means one codon codes for one amino acid correct so here 100 codons have the ability to code for at least 100 amino acid okay last one should should have been should be the nonsense codon so 99 amino acid is possible in this case okay so anyhow i will not confuse you here so the 21st one so we have the first codon second codon third done four five six seven okay so seventh one this one is the 21st base pair correct correct if you just you know count it is it is the 21st base pair so this one will produce one amino acid this is another 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 but in this case there is mutation correct so deletion it is gone 
now the six amino acids will be normal the seventh one instead of this particular nitrogen is base we may have another one there is nothing but frame shifting deletion has happened right the frame shift will be taken place as a result instead of a proper amino acid we will get a different amino acid we will get a blue color amino acid a different one so the question is how many amino acids remain unchanged in the form polypeptide six simple what is the formula 21 because we have to know that there are a total of seven codons seven codons mean seven into three 21 so divided by three because each codon consists of three nitrogenous base so seven but in the 21st base pair itself deletion has occurred that means i cannot consider this so i have to go with 18 so 18 by 3 is nothing but 6 answer is c option c simple easy last question and uh, we have come to the end of this mcqs of the chapter molecular base of inheritance the following ratio is generally constant for a given species what is the meaning of constant one okay constant for a given species given species in the sense for human beings for example okay so if you look into the dna look at this uh, dna structure you simply count how many a's are there so you count it you may get around of, of 30 a's 30 a's are there then how many t's are there in the opposite opposite strand t a always you know binds with thymine correct so 30 itself you cannot uh, expect more than that how many c's are there let us take you know 35 c's are there and how many g's are there obviously 35 itself correct so this is actually proposed and discovered by a scientist called as Chargaff and it is famously called as Chargaff's rule okay so according to Chargaff rule he says that the number of purine is always equal to number of pyrimidines it is always constant for a species so here option a c a plus g that is purines correct and what we have c plus t that is pyrimidines is equal so that is nothing but a plus g divided by c plus t that is nothing but equal to 1 so option a is correct for this question okay so we have done with all 30 questions and i hope that this session is uh, really helpful for you and for your need as well as competitive examination if you like this video and this mcq series please do this and also please share this okay thank you very much